Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Yes, what is Athletic Greens? Well, it's a comprehensive, all-in-one green powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs across four pillars of health, gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. It's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals. They list them all on the back here. By the way, you can see them in all tiny letters that I can just about read when I have my glasses on. These are whole food sourced ingredients combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste in order to jumpstart your daily routine. The, I've heard people say that, yeah, I use it to replace my coffee. I'm not either. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I'll have my coffee. And I have some athletic greens along with it. In fact, I just had a cup of coffee right now. I have some athletic greens. I just feel like, I don't know, it's one of those things which could totally be in, all, in, in my head. <laughs> But I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've got that longer going energy, which is kind of nice. I like longer going energy. It also, despite being very green and the sort of thing you might feel like tastes like, I don't know, plants. It tastes super good. It's kind of sweet, but it also doesn't. I think there's so many calories this has. Uh, oh, sorry. It says it's low calorie, but less than one gram of sugar per serving. But it tastes sweet. It tastes good. It looks weird. I don't think I'm supposed to say that, but uh, it tastes good. And it's got all of those, uh, it's got all those things you need. Look, I'm not like some crazy fitness YouTube guy, but uh, I know, and I know I also don't have the healthiest diet in the world. You know, with Athletic Greens, boom, 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 boom. Replaces that, you know, that multivitamin and it uh, just, uh, well, it's convenient, it's tasty, it's better. It's Athletic Greens, yeah. Gluten-free, daily-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low-allergen, low-calorie. Oh my god, it's a lot of good things about that. Uh, Athletic Greens is the perfect dietary support regimen. So, if this Athletic Greens sounds like something for you, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash TCC. And what? You'll get a year's supply of vitamin D plus five free travel packs. Whoops, wrong way around. Got those right here uh, for free. So, again, athleticgreens.com forward slash TCC. You get your Athletic Greens. You get your travel packs. You get your vitamin D, which I don't have in front of me right now, but I have at my desk. And, uh, yeah, all that fantastic stuff. Athleticgreens.com forward slash TCC. And now back to today's video. We're back. Yes, hello, welcome. It's a new episode of The Casual Criminalist. I, this morning, I have a Twitter. You can follow me at Simon Whistler, uh, at symbol Simon Whistler. People know how Twitter works, facts boy. Why, why are you spelling this out? Uh, people hit me up on Twitter. Everyone's like, uh, Spotify, I had no idea. You know, if you got Spotify, they tell you your most listened to songs of the year. Spotify, uh, apparently, if you listen to podcasts on there, I don't. I use the like native uh, Apple podcast app. But apparently, they tell you what your most listened to podcasts are. And over the last 24 hours, I mean, this will probably come out in January or something crazy. But uh, over the last 24 hours, everyone has been sharing with me how they're how casual criminalist is like their number one show like there are so many screenshots and it's like I, I i guess the rap came out everyone got it at the same time and i got so many so many people sharing it as a number one show and i love that i mean just their personal number one show it's not like the number one show in like any ha, it, true crime <laughs> it's like extremely competitive it's never going to be the number one show there we say that maybe it will take it to number one tell a friend Get them to listen to. I mean, you got to listen to it on the podcast apps, other because the YouTube stuff doesn't count in the uh, in the in the charts for podcasts for whatever reason. I figured they could figure that out, couldn't they? Anyway, not important. I just appreciate all of you listening to the show and sharing that with me. It's awesome. Um, thank you so much. It's uh, yeah, it's real nice. Thank you. Uh, people aren't here for super long introductions or my praise or thanks to them. They're uh, here for a murder today. A $9 million murder, in fact. Alaska's teen hitman tragedy. Oh my god. A hitman making $9 million. I feel like that just happens in movies, because in the real world, whatever you hear, like, yeah, yeah, they paid someone to kill someone else. It's never that much money. It's usually like a few grand. And I'm like, obviously, that's a lot of money. But it to, to murder someone and risk going to prison forever? It seems like, I mean, kind of surprisingly affordable, really. Which uh, is... I mean, I say that it's like, yeah, well, I mean, if I ever need a hitman, it's good to know I got a couple of grand socked away just in case. That's a joke, <laughs> future prosecutors. <laughs> ah! Um, so I don't know when $9 million comes into it because that's pretty mad. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of kills. Uh, this episode is uh, written by Callum. Thank you so much, Callum. Let's jump in. Oh, if you're new here, I've never read this before. That's the shtick on this show. It's called A Cold Read. 
uh, or a sight reading. Or uh, that's it. There's two two phrases for it. It's what I'm going to do. Let's go. Oh, also, thank you to Jen, wonderful editor, editor to this channel. You're lucky she even performed for you. Who adds in some uh, music, some graphics, if you're watching this show on YouTube. Brilliant stuff. And it's been about 20 minutes, Simon. So how about we actually get into the content? Yes, let's go. The internet is a dark place. One minute you're watching videos of cats wearing funny little pajamas, and the next, the YouTube algorithm has pushed you towards some Englishman gleefully recounting the details of horrific murders from around the globe. Who could we be talking about, Callum? Truly grotesque stuff. It's little wonder that parents are so worried about what their kids get up to online. Yeah, the internet was crazy back in like the early 2000s. <laughs> Not, uh, late 90s when i was like a kid on the internet now it's like oh my god <laughs> the internet's really scary there's such dark places on the internet i heard of something that i'd never heard about before i heard about it on another podcast it was something called run the gauntlet which is basically where there's like 20 videos or something and they just get worse so the first one might be like someone murdering a cat or whatever and then it's like you get to like video number one i've not seen this i've absolutely no desire to see this i never will but, you know a little bit of luck never come across this again but then it gets to like video number one it's like yeah yeah yeah, like isis beheadings and, shit. and it's like oh why who would do this <laughs> why is this the internet that my kids have to grow up with after today's story you'll probably agree that their fears are well founded in today's cash cream short short it's like 12 pages mate we're going deep into a murder plot that began on the dark side of the web. The story of how one group of everyday Alaskan teens was manipulated by a twisted and depraved online creep into committing the worst crimes imaginable. In the summer of 2019, what began as a tragic disappearance spiraled out into a complex murder-for-hire plot featuring a young romance, a $9 million prize, and the callous execution of an innocent young woman. Consider this a PSA. Don't believe everything you hear online, and more importantly, if an internet stranger ever asks you to kill someone, probably better give it a pass. Yeah, don't believe everything you read online, especially if it's on Facebook. Oh my god, what a piece of sh**. I, I just, the more I learn about Facebook, the more I just don't like it. I didn't like it already, because their copyright is a joke. Like, the number, the amount of my stuff, my videos that I work hard on and make on YouTube, that people, like, unscrupulous people just steal and upload to Facebook and take the money for from is outrageous i'm not sure if it's that bad anymore but it used to be crazy i'd just be on there and I'd be like wait that's that's my video why am i getting paid for this what the hell and facebook just do d all about it so i am not a fan of facebook and i don't think they're very in it. Uh, i don't think they're very uh i don't think the company's run very ethically allegedly young hearts run free Today's tragedy actually begins unexpectedly as a romance. In the early months of 2019, Anchorage teen Denali Bremer met the man of her dreams, a handsome, charming, 21-year-old multi-millionaire named Tyler. How do you get to be a multi-millionaire when you're 21? That's impressive, or uh, your parents are rich and gave you money way too early. Straight away, she was had over heels in love, but there was just one problem. She'd never actually met Tyler. Tyler is not real, I'll tell you that now, Denali. Because while she was trapped up in the desolate northern wastes they call Alaska, he was all the way down in the desolate midwestern wasteland they call Kansas. Look, uh, what's your name? What was your name? Denali? If there is a handsome, charming, 21-year-old multi-millionaire named Tyler, he doesn't need to find a girlfriend online. He's a handsome millionaire. He's gonna be fine. <laughs> Their relationship took place entirely virtually, a whirlwind romance conducted mostly through the medium of Snapchat. For those, oh, this is really, really, re 2019? This is so recent. I don't know why I just skipped over that date. This feels like some 90s AIM sh uh, for those of you not familiar a few years back, this was the app of choice for those looking to exchange pictures of their genitals. Snapchat's still around, right? I think so. Didn't they just get crushed by like those other, like the ones that everyone's now heard of, like Instagram, TikTok, all of these guys. For Denali, the distance was just a minor road bump in a fairy tale love story. What mattered most was that in Tyler she'd found a confidant who could listen to her troubled past without judgment. 
She had suffered quite a troubled upbringing at a young age. She and her half-sister were taken from their mother after allegations of abuse and handed over to state care. Denali changed her name after becoming adopted and started the habit of hiding behind a string of fake monitors. Dakota, Angela, or Angel. It, this, it was the last one that she went by online. Tyler didn't care about any of that. He didn't even care that Angel, despite being just 18, had a daughter of her own who was also given up for adoption. That's part of any healthy relationship after all, accepting each other's flaws and history without shame. Well, that part is true. But I get the feeling there's going to be more layers to this one, isn't there, Callum? However, when her new love started to share some of his own dark secrets, her fairy tale romance took a little bit of a turn. See, this Prince Charming turned out to have some uh, unsavory predilections. Predilections? Predilections. Unsavory predilections. To put it lightly, it began shortly after they got together. Tyler started to gradually introduce his twisted sexual desires into their conversations whenever possible, hinting that he wanted Denali's help to live out his fantasies. And I'm not talking about a bit of harmless roleplay here. This guy wanted the real deal. Several months into the relationship, it all came to a head when he texted Denali with a proposition that would change her life forever. He was willing to make her rich beyond her wildest dreams. All she had to do was kill someone. Uh... Yeah, I mean, this is like, she's, I don't know who the victim is yet, so you've got to be careful. It's like, you don't want to get into that victim blaming. But it is like, I mean, there's a certain amount of gullibility here because didn't we already discuss that Tyler's probably not real? And uh, if he, he's, no, it's just, this doesn't really make sense, does it? The Teenage Death Squad. Now, in my limited experience, when your Tinder convo veers towards a murder for hire plot that's usually the time to unmatch if you say so callum i'm just uh, all of these dating apps and stuff i'm just like this this all came way late like i my now wife and i been together for 10 years tinder all that stuff way before my time i feel like an old man i feel like really old man However, Denali Bremer didn't share my uncanny intuitions. Perhaps she was blinded by love, or more likely, blinded by the nine million dollar fee that she was promised. Yes, her wealthy older boyfriend was offering up nine figures, nearly ten figures. What? No one? No? No? Wait, no, that's not nine figures. Nine figure bounty? That's like a hundred mil. This is like a seven figure bounty, right? That's how it works, right? Seven figures is a million dollars. Like, I'm not being really dumb, am I? I'm fairly sure I'm right here. Nine figures would be like a hundred million. Seven figures would be one million or nine million. It's almost a ten figure bounty. It's almost an eight figure bounty. Why is this so confusing? I think it's just because Callum has led me wrong. Because you don't count the pennies in a nine in a in a sum like that. I don't think. All she had to do was take someone's life. It could be anyone and provide video documentation as proof. I know at least a couple of our listeners just thought to themselves, nine million, I'd do it for nine grand. What? If you thought that, check yourself. <laughs> if that's you, you're truly awful. Everyone knows you should charge 100k minimum. Damn, Callum. I mean, that seems really expensive. Uh, whenever you read these news stories, it always seems to be like five grand or less. Like, because... People who are murdering people for money, they're probably quite desperate. I mean, it's not like it is in the movies where it's some guy who's got like a big silenced pistol and he comes up from behind after like stalking them for weeks and just like, like two bullets in the back, one in the head. Just basically this entirely on watching too many spy movies. But when I did watch a, it was a documentary about spies once when I was a kid. And it was like, spies always shoot twice. Like, it's like, every time just in case the first bullet doesn't do enough damage so whenever every time i play games i always play with silence pistol and i always shoot people twice it's just how i roll like a spy and Manali's moral compass was about as skewed as yours because she didn't bulk at the offer. According to text conversations found on their phones, she readily accepted and the next few days was spent hammering out the details of Tyler's indecent proposal. Yo, if someone pays you nine million dollars, that is gonna like someone's gonna flag that up. It's going to get, you know, they're going to be like, uh, where'd that $9 million come from? Your bank, uh, the government. They're going to be like, um, hello. <laughs> you were just an 18 year old and now you've got $9 million. <laughs> what? Where did you get that from? 
This is where things got a bit tricky. See, most of you listening are probably well versed in the ins and outs of the criminal arts. You're the sort of people that, even though you're absolutely lovely and would never hurt a fly, most likely know 10 different ways to effectively dispose of a body without leaving a trace of evidence behind. It's just a side effect of listening to thousands of hours of murder stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a bit weird, isn't it? This show is, it has taught people, like, that person who put together the list of rules from the casual criminalist, like, what not to do as a criminal. By the way, oh, update. I know I've been promising this forever. Notebooks. Um, ah, oh, sorry, this is like, I feel like I'm doing an ad plug or something. I'm not. I just want to update you guys on the notebooks that I promised. I wanted to do a notebook, which on the front just says, definitely not my crimes. And I got one of these printed. Oh, hold on, I'll get it. No, I'm sorry if you're watching the, uh, the, 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 if you're listening to the audio version of this, but everyone watching can see, like, I've got this book, this notebook, and it says, like, definitely not my crimes on the front, then the little casual criminalist logo. But I don't know if you can see this. This is supposed to be, like, solid dark grey. And just in real life, it looks so shit, and the printing's kind of, like, murky, and the quality's just, like, honestly, it's just a bit shit. And the prices, for me to make any money with this, like, I don't know, like, four euros or something crazy, was like, well, just like five dollars. These would have to be like 15 euros or something stupid. So I was like, no, we're not doing that. I'm gonna do this better. I am looking and I have found, I'm getting the sam a sample made right now, which is super expensive by the way, to just get one made. But then when we get it done on bulk, it'll be even better. It's gonna be a properly nice notebook with like, I don't know, like mole skin or leather on the front and then stamped in gold on the front is gonna be definitely not my crimes. Like, classy don't worry it's not going to be tacky like uh embossed on the front gold embossed casual criminalist logo and then you open it up and on the inside uh page like before you get to the place where you can take notes is going to be the casual criminalist rules so it's going to list like number one don't write down your crimes number two blah 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 there's like 50 of them and they're all going to be listed on there and then i can I, I could probably even sell that for like the same price as this piece of crap so everyone you have to wait I'm sorry, but it's going to be worth it. These are going to be. I've also got to work out how you actually sell these. How do you ship them to people? All of this stuff. But I'm a big brain. I can figure it out. And by that, I mean I, I hired someone <laughs> off Upwork to help me figure this stuff out. <laughs> uh, but it's happening, and I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm really looking forward to getting the sample because I don't know. I think this is going to be really cool. It's the most complex thing I've ever done with merch, and I'm pretty excited about it. Sorry. Back to the video. It can be easy to forget that this is by no means normal information to possess. Seriously, nobody but the coroner should know as much about the decomposition process, you sick bastard. Denali was not a student of True Crime University, so she was as clueless as your average well-adjusted person when it comes to the intricacies of death and destruction. Just Google it. <laughs> Use a VPN. <laughs> if she was going to pull this off, she'd need to... <laughs> That's going to be a new rule, isn't it? <laughs> if you Google something like that, use a VPN. Uh, she was going to pull it off. She would need some help. So in May 2019, Denali got to work scouring the criminal underworld of Alaska, enlisting the help of some of the toughest gangsters and contract killers that she could find. And hold on, no, that's not right. According to my notes, she was what she did was actually just ask her mates, the same mates she used to skip skip school with and go smoke weed in the woods with. Minor spoiler warning: any plan undertaken by a bunch of pu uh, pubescent stoners is pretty much doomed from the start. Yes. Yes, it is. Also, how's... No, I mean, if you went to an actual gangster, they'd be like, mate, <laughs> no one's sending you $9 million, you loser. How are none of her friends like, yo, Denali, have you ever considered that Tyler might not be a real 21-year-old handsome millionaire who's interested in you? And she'll be like, he is real! And they'll be like, well, you're on your own with the murder, at least. <laughs> at least that. But I somehow get the feeling that's not how the story's gonna go, which is weird. I mean, I feel like I was stupid as a teenager. But not that stupid. The first to join Denali's ragtag band of teen hitmen was 16-year-old uh, trigger man Cade McIntosh. This Macintosh. Is that how you say it? McIntosh? Macintosh? It's weirdly spelled. This babyface killer was a homeless uh, was homeless at the time, so the promise of a seven-figure share of the loot was too good to turn down. One little murder and some wealthy benefactor would set him up for the rest of his life. He didn't even need to bring his own gun because Denali already owned a pistol for him to use. Similarly, the ringleader's next recruit, 19-year-old Caleb Leyland, was all too happy to take them off on their offer. 500,000 and all he had to do was lend them his truck for the day. Now she had the murder weapon, a vehicle, and some poor mug to pull the trigger for her. The plan was almost good to go. This is definitely one of the rules that would be in that notebook. It's don't involve your friends or your family in your crimes. 
it's more people to tell on you. It's more people like, yeah, when they find that truck, they're going to be like, who owns this truck? Okay, well, that must be the same person who owned the gun that fired the bullet that shot him. I mean, you're just you're just creating a ton of evidence against yourself. And five hundred thousand dollars, just go buy it. Just go up to the ca- go up to the car park. Go up to a car park. Find someone with a car and be like, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars if you just walk away from this car right now. Although you don't have the money up front, do you? So that'd be tricky. I'd have to like promise it to them. And then they're not going to give you the car. Okay, whatever. Look, there's better ways to do it. Just because I can't figure it out in about three minutes doesn't mean that there isn't a better way. There is a better way. It's not borrowing your mate's car for half a million dollars. Uh, not real money. But apparently our heroine had never heard of the expression too many cooks slash assassins spoil the broth murder. That's because she'd never got my notebook with that note inside telling her how to be a better criminal. Because she then added another two accomplices into the mix uh, to help with planning. We don't know their names or exact roles because they were minors at the time and therefore their identities are protected by Canadian law. In the end, it was a full five-man squad of would-be killers and none of them were even old enough to legally drink. Yet, now they were tasked with ending a human life and I'm a little worried with how game they were to give it a go. Do they not have video games in Alaska? Community centers? Literally anything to keep teens occupied so they don't go lord of the flies like this? I don't know, Alaska is pretty wild. I don't know what, it's just, isn't it just like ice and snow and cold people? And Sarah Palin? It sounds horrible. Apparently not, because do not, I mean, I'm sure it's beautiful and all that stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry everyone from Alaska. But it is kind of like remote. And there is Sarah Palin. I don't believe that Americans are going to support this. And- Apparently not, because Denali was able to muster up a gang under a for- in under a fortnight. She convened a meeting of this pimply death squad in late May to finalize the plan, promising each of them huge amounts of cash for their service and silence. The only thing left was to pick a date for the crime. It was decided that on June the 2nd, they would put their plan into motion and someone very close to one of them would meet a horrific end. Oh my god, guys, you're making so many mistakes. If... Look, look, look. I don't want to get into how to do crimes properly, but let's... 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 Um, if this was... If someone's paying you $9 million dollars to kill someone and all you have to do is provide evidence of it you should do it yourself and it should be someone you definitely don't know we've learned that many times on this show it's always the police it's they're always going to look at people the person knows because random cold-blooded acts of murder of just random strangers just not very common at all <laughs> a body on the banks on the 3rd of june oh no they actually did kill someone didn't they I guess they did. This is the casual criminalist, so there was going to be a murder, but it's that's quite depressing. It's very depressing. On the 3rd of June 2019, handyman Timothy Hoffman drove his motorbike down to an Anchorage police station to file a missing re- person's report for his daughter. Ay, 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 Cynthia C.C. Hoffman. The previous day, 19-year-old C.C. had gone out on a hiking trip with some of her school friends, but had failed to return that night. That might sound normal enough for an older teenager, but not for Cece. Mr. Hoffman was especially worried because his daughter was developmentally disabled. She wasn't yet equipped to stay out alone at night. Cece had graduated from the special ed program in her high school, and at 19, she had a mental age of someone closer to 12. At the same time, I don't like it when they kill people. I don't like it when it's, it's always like, I know, but it's always someone's daughter or someone's dad or mum or Ah, husband or wife. I don't like it. I like it when it's just anonymous, Callum. It makes me feel bad. At the time of her disappearance, she was studying in a life skills school so she could one day be self-sufficient while working as her handyman father's assistant on the weekends. That evening, she was due to go to her father's place to collect some money from a job. When she failed to turn up, Mr. Hoffman tried ringing her, but with no luck. He later told a courtroom, In this family, you all have phones. When dad calls, you answer. I don't care if you're at church and the holy pastor is preaching. I don't care if you're at school, t- taking the high school school diploma ca- test. If dad calls, you answer. Cece usually checked in with him every three hours when she was out, but now there was total radio silence. The last anyone had heard of her whereabouts was a text from her hiking buddy Angela. She and a young boy had picked Cece up to visit a national park north of Anchorage and claimed that they had dropped her off at a play park on the outskirts of town later that afternoon at her request. That seems very irresponsible. So what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, we're on the way home. And the person with the twelve, the mental age of a twelve-year-old, just says, "Can you drop me at that play park?" The answer is no. <laughs> you have the mental age of a twelve-year-old. Get back in the car, or never leave the car. We're taking you home. Quote: I hope she comes home safely. She's my best friend. 
the girl added. But of course, Angela was well aware that Cece wouldn't be coming home safe. This was just another pseudonym of Denali Bremer, and she knew exactly what had happened to Cynthia Hoffman. After reporting the disappearance to the police, Mr. Hoffman started scouring the town by himself. I put out search parties. I drove my motorcycle through woods and bike paths. I floored it all over town doing speed limits I should not have been doing, looking for my kid. But it was all in vain. The following afternoon, he received a knock at the door. He knew instantly what it's meant. Cece's body had been found. Late that morning, she was spotted washed up on the banks of the Aklunta River, about 30 miles northeast of the city. Her feet were duct taped together. There was a single bullet hole in the back of her head. <sighs> oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Devious alibi. Now, I think we can all agree that this little criminal is just an innocent kid. Ay, ay, ay. I don't, I, I don't like this even more now. Because I have a, a, a little daughter who's like two years old. And I'm like, oh my god. If anything happened to you, I'd be so devastated. It's really sad. Oh my god, I don't even like thinking about it. Let's just move on. I'm getting sad. Like, properly sad. Now, I think we can all agree that this little criminal case doesn't exactly belong in the police detective training program. It's the true crime equivalent of a four-piece four jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Let's take a second to approach it from the perspective of a cop. You've got a dead body. You've got two teenagers who were last seen with said body before said death. The pair's alibi is that they did go into the forest with the victim, but they claim to they dropped her off safely afterwards, something which nobody could verify. To add to the intrigue, one of these teens is a registered firearm owner for a 9mm pistol, the same kind most likely used in the killing. These people are idiots. Natural ball killers, they were not. In fact, it's quite amazing that it took five minds together to come up with the crime of the century, even if they were teen stoner minds. Our teen hitmen had discovered that murder really wasn't their strong suit, especially when Denali and Caden were brought in by, by the police for questioning on June the 6th, two days after the body was found. If you thought they were bad at murder, they were even, they were even worse in the interrogation room. Their haphazard alibi crumbled faster than a shanty town in a hurricane. It was Denali who folded first, willing to throw her right-hand man under the bus if it meant getting off lightly herself. The story she told the cops went like this. According to Denali Bremen, June the second started off like any other Sunday. She, Caden, and Cece met up in the morning, planning to spend the afternoon driving around Anchorage and smoking weed. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> when that got dull after a few hours, they decided to head up north to visit Thunderbird Falls Trail, a mile-long path through the woods which leads to the 200-foot waterfall of the same name. On the way, Denali had a completely reasonable and bright idea. Hey guys, you know what be fun? Let's wrap each other in dark tape and take pictures in the forest because that's a totally normal thing which we, as teens, would do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, I know she's joking so she could tie someone up so she can shoot them or whatever. But it's like, it's a bit, yeah. Everyone was like, okay. <laughs> Again, apparently Alaska doesn't offer much to keep the young uns busy because the other two were up for the idea of a staged kidnapping photo shoot. So they grabbed a conventionally placed so they grabbed a conveniently placed uh, roll of duct tape and Denali's 9mm pistol from the glove box of the truck and set off in the woods. Why does a 19-year-old have a 9mm? I know, I guess I never, never really touched on that. But you're 19, she's 19? Yeah, she's 19 years old. I mean, I know, if, I guess legally that's fine, but it's a bit weird, isn't it? Like, and just rolling around in a truck, <laughs> like packing heat. Shit. Oh, this is America. Ah, of course, I forget Alaska isn't Canada. Alaska's America. Uh, big brain. I'm like, it's up north, it's Canadian. No, 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 it's America. Yeah, of course, Americans love the guns. Woo! Halfway along the Thunderbird Falls path, they took a detour onto a less traffic trail, which ran along the banks of the Aklunta River. About a mile down the new route, they came across a clearing in the trees and stopped. Denali claimed that Cece was the first to be willingly tied up. They started with her feet, then her hands, then her mouth. Denali then posed with her gun pointed at the girl, because I guess that's supposed to be edgy and cool. Parents, please educate your kids on the dangers of photo shoots with live ammunition. Yes, uh, or just no, 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 no ammunition. Let's just do our photo shoot sans guns. Or ammunition. At all. Let's just not do that. Let's just, let, let's not have kids with guns. Kids with guns. Isn't that a song? Da, 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 kids with guns. Ba, 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 ba. It's really old, though. I mean, old, like my, my, 
It's old. It's quite old. It was at this point that Cece started to panic. She apparently forgot that it was all make-believe and started to struggle for real. Denali pulled the tape off the girl's mouth and hands, but she wouldn't calm down. She started shouting and calling for the police and reporting that the other two kidnapped and sexually assaulted her. The panicking girl reached for the phone in her pocket, and in response, 16-year-old Kada McIntosh grabbed Denali's 9mm pistol from her hands and shot Cece in the back of the head. Just like that, it was over. The victim lay twitching on the ground. Denali was in shock at Caden. He just had executed her best friend right in front of her for virtually no reason, a fact which McIntosh never denied. When presented with this version of events, he told the police that he blacked out at the time, but he had memories of pulling the trigger, then dragging the helpless victim to the riverside and pushing her in while she was still moving. Of course, this meant that McIntosh was arrested on the spot. Denali, on the other hand, painted herself as a shocked and appalled bystander. She was allowed to walk out to the police station and get on with her life. Uh-oh. Yeah, for a very short time. <laughs> it's not time to go on the run. I would say to Alaska, but that's where you already are. <laughs> the Fantasy and the Fraud if the story ended there, then Denali and the mystery man Tyler would have walked free, leaving a homeless 16-year-old to take the entirety of the blame. That wouldn't sit very well with me, but thankfully we're not quite done yet. The rickety house of cards built by our two inept masterminds had only just begun to teeter. It was what came next that would bring it all crashing down on top of them. See, up until this point, Denali had been living in a fantasy land. It's one thing discussing murder fantasies with your online boyfriends, but actually turning them into a reality is another thing altogether. The reality of becoming a murderer had hit Denali like a freight train. Still though, the promise of a $9 million payday probably does cushion the blow a little. She's not getting that million dollars. Uh, $9 million, obviously. Obviously, this is not real. This would be more than enough to get her and her online lover, Tyler, a couple of fake passports and start a new life in the Bahamas. Uh, okay, yeah, but I mean, he's got the $9 million already, so if he really wanted to do that, you'd have done that already. And do you really want to go to the Bahamas with someone who just gave you, theoretically, you know, gave you $9 million to murder somebody? When you're like, I didn't really like that. <laughs> I didn't really like that, Tyler. So she pushed him on it, about a little advanced to deal with the shit that she'd gotten herself into. Well, about that, did anyone think that $9 million sounded a bit too good to be true? If so, you'd have better instincts than this Alaskan teen mum assassin, which isn't saying much. Most of us know not to believe everything that people tell you on the internet, but Denali wasn't so canny. Yeah, I mean, judging by my spam inbox, it's like, you know, it's like, Hello, Mr. Sir, I've got $9.5 million in, a, in, an, in an account of the former African dictator, blah, blah, blah. It's with the United Nations right now, and we need you as a hero to come in and save it. All you have to do is send me some money in advance. It's like, what are you doing? How is this? Do people still fall for this? I mean, I guess people like Denali fall for this. <laughs> She's probably like waiting, like also for her money from Nigerian princes. Ah, it would be funny if she hadn't killed someone. Rather than pay up on his promise, Tyler started planning yet another murder for his assassin girlfriends, and as the days wore on, it became increasingly clear that he had no intention of paying up for the first one. At this point, the penny finally dropped for poor, dim Denali. Her Romeo was more Nigerian prince than Prince Charming. Very nicely put, Callum. There was no $9 million. In fact, it was unlikely that Tyler even had $900 in his bank account. Rather than a billionaire businessman, he was actually a common basement-dwelling, hot-pocket, munching, plastic-bottle-pissing internet troll. Our poor heroine had been well and truly catfished in the darkest, most horrible way by f***ing Tyler. He's probably not even handsome. <laughs> It was, it was even worse than that, though. Now Tyler had completely cornered the teenager, and there was nothing she could do to escape him. He had information which could send Denali to prison for life, meaning that he didn't need the millionaire ruse to manipulate her anymore. His messages took on a more threatening tone. We can meet, but once I see a cop, I'm telling him or her that I made you rape people and killed Cece. I mean, wait, <laughs> she didn't rape anyone as far as we know. And dude... You got her, You got evidence of her doing a murder. <laughs> That's enough. You don't need to throw false allegations in there. Like, why be like, yeah, and rape. It's like, mate, 
you know murder's enough, right? She's going away forever on murder, and that is something she actually did. But I mean, let's face it, Tyler's probably not the biggest big brain in the world. Denali was forced to keep up her end of the twisted bargain despite receiving nothing in return. This finally pushed her past breaking point. Several days after the first police interview, she posted a public video to Snapchat in which she publicly admitted her guilt. God damn, okay, here we go, I got a quote. I just want to thank everyone that's been there for me my whole life and these past few years and everything. I f***ed up. I know I did. If I could take back what I've done, I can't. I'm sorry, everybody, my family, my friends. I guess you will hear from me when you hear from me. But I won't be back for a long time. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. But you did. <laughs> but you did. You did. You totally did. What are you talking about? <laughs> But you did mean to do it, Denali. Callum and I, same page. In fact, the premeditation here is clearer than in almost every other case that we've covered, and the truth of the matter would soon come spilling out. Yeah, I mean, dude, the, what, they, they're obviously going to look at your phone. They're obviously going to get those records. Although Snapchat delete all that stuff. That was their thing, right? Like, when you send something, it immediately deletes. But don't Snapchat... I feel it would be a pretty massive invasion of privacy if Snapchat actually were keeping all that stuff. And also probably illegal, given what people send to each other on Snapchats and the user base that use it. Which is kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's a bit weird. That's a bit weird, Snapchat. If your like thing is people sending nudes to each other, and your primary user... I'm really, really worryingly getting into allegedly territory here. <laughs> like, I'm not sure what Snapchat actually is. But from what I gather and from what I remember, its primary user base is teenagers. And its primary thing is that is is people, I mean, allegedly their user base, sending nudie pictures to each other. That sounds really dodgy. Is that allowed? And I mean, then they definitely can't be keeping records of it. So maybe there is no record of it because Snapchat deletes it. I don't even know. Allegedly, Snapchat, I don't know anything about you. This is just speculation. I'm so sorry if I've said something that offends you. You're a giant company who I hope doesn't sue me. Um, not that you could for anything I've said, allegedly. <laughs> I don't know what am I doing. When the cops came to pick her up for a second time, Denali was forced to fill them in on everything she left out the last time. Specifically, the fact that she was to blame for putting everything in motion. She, of course, also told them about Tyler from Kansas and the $9 million deal that wasn't to be. As for the real story of what happens by, up by the Eklutna River, it was much the same as the first version, bar the fact that Cece was actually forcibly bound by the bear and that Denali was a much more active participant than she let on at first. Yes, Babyface McIntosh was always supposed to be the trigger man, but rather than a hapless bystander, Denali was actually the camera woman. Oh my god. Oh god, yeah, the, 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 the Tyler dude. He wanted evidence of this, so they filmed this. Ay, 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 ay. Don't film your crimes. That's one, you know, don't. Don't be doing that. I'm pretty sure that's a rule already. Because as you'll remember, part of her boyfriend's terms was that he wanted photographic evidence of the crime as it unfolded. So while McIntosh was binding and gagging the victim, she was sending Snapchat videos to Tyler that documented every second. She filmed as Cece cried out for help. She kept filming as McIntosh put the gun to the back of her head and pulled the trigger. She even kept filming and photographing after that single shot rang out through the forest and her friends lay dying on the floor. That's by far one of the coldest, cruelest things that we've ever come across writing for this show. After the deed was done, she and the gunman traveled back down to Anchorage, where they sent the decoy text to the victim's father. Then they called on their other accomplices to help burn Cynthia Hoffman's ID, some of their clothing, her purse, and the gun used to kill her. You're gonna burn that gun? Those kids who helped burn the evidence were picked up by the <coughs> on the 10th of June alongside Caleb Leyland, the owner of the truck. Diabolical Denali decided that if she was going down, she was taking the lot of them with her. It was game over for our wannabe teen assassin and her entire team. Denali was still penniless, utterly humiliated, and outed as a sadistic killer willing to prey on a mentally disabled best friend. The fantasy life that she had been living lay in tatters. But what about the other half of that life? The true mastermind behind this whole affair was still thousands of miles away, and nobody even knew his real name. Oh yeah, they gotta hunt this guy. Like, how anonymous is Snapchat? Can you find this dude somehow? I mean, I'm assuming like yes, because he's probably not some genius. And the FBI is gonna raid the sh** out of your house, my dude. And you're gonna go to prison. To catch a predator. So how does one go about tracking down such a criminal mastermind? Well, you know, he's not a criminal mastermind. He's not gonna be a big criminal mastermind, is he? He's just some guy who was like... Hey, I'm rich and super handsome. 
Yeah. Uh, I'll give you $9 million if you kill someone. It's not criminal mastermind behavior. It's really not. As I said, we don't have a name, and once she saw through his ruse, Denali wondered if she even knew who this Tyler, what this Tyler really looked like. Had he covered his digital tracks properly, there's every chance that he might have been able to cut off contact and slip away entirely. However, this Tyler, much like everyone else involved in the crime, wasn't the sharpest tool in the box. Throughout their relationship, he had been using a phone number tied to his real name and address. Ah! <laughs> ah! What are you doing? Just get a fake phone number. Go to any store. I don't know why I'm giving advice to criminals again, but it's just so obvious. Just go get a burner phone. Have you not watched any television? Have you not watched a single episode of Breaking Bad? Come on. Seriously, it's like nobody had even watched a single episode of a cop show. Yes, again, Callum and I, same page, because we're not... I mean, I, 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 I'm sure Callum's super smart, because look at what he writes. I'm just an average man. <laughs> I was like, guys... Uh, what? Like, come on. Come on. Do better. The police searched through Denali's phone and found the mystery man listed under the name Babe. A quick search of the phone records revealed that Babe, aka Tyler of Kansas, was actually Darren Schillmiller of Indiana. Court documents note that he does not look like the young man he portrayed himself to look like. He is not a millionaire, and he lives in Indiana. Ah. And I am going to bet that Darren Schillmiller, I don't know, I've just got the feeling he's not super handsome. He's probably, well, I don't know. Just imagine a basement dweller, shall we? So what exactly does he look like? How can I put this nicely? He sort of looks, he's not the sort, he's not got the sort of looks that you'd kill for, or to put it less nicely, he's, he roughly resembles a human shaped lump of grime scraped off a poor chan's floor. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not being mean here. From the sounds of it, Schilmiller look, sounds like he's one of the worst cretins that the internet has to offer. The media descended on his tiny hometown when the news broke, harassing bemused family members and any local that would talk to them for information on the enigmatic Schilmiller. Uh, the reports they gathered from his acquaintances sound about as bad as you'd expect for a guy who fantasizes about making women kill people for his pleasure. An old schoolmate told local Indiana media that he had a habit of making fake social media profiles to try and coerce pictures from younger classmates. When his peers grew up, he began asking for pictures of their children instead. Holy <laughs> What? Like, what? How, are you not, how have you not been arrested yet? If someone was like, hey, 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 uh, now that you're old, can I have pictures of your children? Be like, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Why don't you meet me at the police station in about 20 minutes and we'll sort that out? Yeah, yeah. The police station. Uh, the woman added, I think most people just thought it was because he didn't know. Like, he was just slow. He knew the difference between right and wrong. He didn't steal. He really didn't do anything bad. I guess he just didn't understand life. Mm, no, he sounds, he sounds kind of evil. He sounds like, he sounds like an evil dude. Like, he seems to know what's up. He manipulated people pretty successfully. I mean, also, not the brightest people, as we've already established, but still, like, uh, he, he knows what's up. He's not, he's not, like, that stupid. Oh, yes, he didn't do anything bad. He just asked single mothers to provide him with images of their children's spot soiled diapers. No, he didn't. What? 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 <laughs> What? As someone who has dealt with many soiled diapers, like, what possible pleasure could you derive from that? <laughs> it is extremely unpleasant. It's not like he was some kind of dirty shoplifter or anything. God forbid. Rather, yeah, it's like, who would you rather have a drink in the pub with? A guy who shoplifts or a guy who gets some sort of strange gratification from looking at the nappy, uh, soiled nappies? I'll tell you a hundred percent. hundred percent. Rather than bang our heads against the wall. I mean, there's very, like, I don't know. I think I'd rather hang out with someone who had been convicted of a violent crime <laughs> than the guy who likes pictures of, uh, like, uh, soiled diapers. Because at least I can understand violent crime. It's like, I don't know, I'm not a violent criminal. But I understand if someone, like, gets into a fight and punches someone in the face and gets arrested for it. I'm sure there was a good reason for punching someone in the face. Or even, like, beating the crap out of someone. It's like there's definitely situations where it's like, I mean, I'm not strong enough to beat the crap out of someone. Where it's like, yeah, I'll beat the crap out of someone. Like, I can see myself doing that if the situation rolled around. I can't because I'm too weak. We've already established that. But 
I understand that. I understand violence. I don't understand. So I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sounding like I'm just going to regularly go beat the shit out of someone. What I'm trying to establish is I feel like I could have a drink with someone who yeah, has a violent crime conviction rather than the person who gets some weird gratification from babies' nappies. Because that person's a bit of a sicko. <laughs> Rather than bang our heads against the wall trying to figure out where that woman draws the line on morality, there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It seems like I just did spend my head banging, banging my head against the wall for five minutes. We'll just say that it was basically an open secret that Shill Miller was messed up. The small town of New Salisbury, where he lived, had a population of just 600, and pretty much all of them knew that he was a legendary creep. He was even investigated by the FBI in 2018 good. So it came as little surprise when several days after his involvement was made public, Shill Miller and his teenage girlfriends were hit with a slew of extra charges concerning some terrible happenings the days after the murder. Apparently, Shill Miller went a bit mad with power and attempted to force Denali into as many depraved acts as possible before the game was up. After the murder, both of them had deleted their text records, but the cops subpoenaed Verizon to get a copy of their logs, and forensic technicians were able to recover mountains of data from the devices. Along, among this data were messages and images relating to two more crimes in the days directly after the killing. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Schumiller had used his new leverage to force Denali into committing a pair of sexual assaults for his sick amusement, both were with underage victims. Among the text messages listed in the court documents are gems like, Gonna go buy weed first. I wanna get a high for it so she doesn't fight me. There are other quotes from these messages which I found in news reports, but it's been days now and I can't burn the words from my corneas. Thank you. Yeah, that top, that previous one was enough. I don't need to know anything else. Like, let's not go down that route. I'll spare, you, I'll spare you that particular bit of unpleasantness. With her back against the wall and nowhere to turn, Denali found herself at the mercy of the sexually depraved neck beard, which is probably why she just chose to turn herself in before their crime spree went any further. Not that I feel particularly sorry for our little teenage executioner, I mean technically she was a victim in a sense, but remember she only agreed to the murder in the first place in the hopes of getting a fat paycheck from the fictional millionaire. Her motivations were purely selfish, and she had months, not days, not weeks, to turn over the implications in her mind, yet she still chose to go through with it. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your motivation is. You've committed a horrible crime. You need to be punished for this, severely. And the person who incited that crime also needs to be punished severely. Now she and her boyfriends were going to pay the price. For his role in orchestrating the crime, the FBI promptly swooped in to pick up Tyler slash Schilmer out of his grandmother's basement. I'm not joking, this was actually his living arrangement at the time. His bail was set at a million dollars, and the Alaskan prosecutors immediately began extra extradition procedures to bring him up north. Finally, the doting couple would be able to meet in person, although probably not under the circumstances that either of them were hoping for. <laughs> no, but the circumstances you deserve. Also, why set bail for someone like this? Why is there... He doesn't have a million dollars. He's not going to be able to get that together. Why have bail at all? Just let him be in prison. He's a horrible criminal. As things stand... If there's one positive we can glean from this story, wow, Callum, really? <laughs> okay. It's that the whole plot was so haphazard that every single person is incriminated beyond belief. Okay, yeah, I suppose so. Like, they were so shit at crime that they just made it very easy for them all to be prosecuted and hopefully go to jail for ages. That made a rel for a relatively swift and efficient investigation. However, the same can't be said for the legal proceedings. From his jail cell in Indiana, Schilmiller openly confessed to masterminding the crime and even admitted that it was he who chose Cece as the victim. He, Denali Bremer, shot Darren Schilmiller, Caleb Leland, and Kat Caden McIntosh, McIntosh were indicted on first and second degree murder charges, as well as multiple counts of conspiracy to commit murder. Despite being just 16 and having the appearance of a 12 year old rocking a baby's first moustache, McIntosh is being tried as an adult, seeing as he was the one who fired the fatal shot. The, uh, the two unnamed juveniles were served similar charges related to their taking part in the plot and covering up the murder, but since the court never ruled to try them as an adult, their identities will be protected for life. Everyone involved is looking at a maximum 99-year sentence if found guilty on those first-degree charges, which CeCe's father thinks isn't enough. Oh my god. Everyone involved is looking at a maximum 99-year sentence if found guilty of these first-degree charges, which CeCe's father thinks isn't enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh... Yeah. Yeah, we return to the old chestnut, the death penalty, don't we? It's probably a thing in Alaska, right? Sarah Palin's from there. It, it feels a bit, you know, that they would get to, they, that they would do that up there with Sarah Palin. 
being in charge makes it gives that it's got that death penalty vibe doesn't it um yeah so maybe maybe that would be nice i mean i think i think i think at a vigil to remember his daughter he told the media i have one thing on my mind and that's to send all six of them to hell and i ain't gonna rest until it's done since alaska doesn't have the death penalty ah oh, alaska 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 needs to be a bit more yeehaw he'll probably just have to settle for his for life behind bars which is looking incredibly likely for at least the three main culprits bremer and Schill Miller both face a slew of additional charges related to the images of the sexual assaults on their phones, which could take a few more, which could te- uh, add a few more decades on top for good measure. As things currently stand, everyone involved has pled not guilty. Uh, if I had to take a wild guess, I'd say that they're all hoping to shift responsibility up the chain of command and claim some lighter charges for themselves. Unfortunately, it'll be a while before we know how that pans out this is pretty much where the story ends for now the trial has been subject to a series of delays on account of the massive piles of evidence which these half-witted hitmen left behind <laughs> seriously the defense team have had to request two delays just to pick through the hundreds of thousands of pages of evidence stacked against them consider that a bit of a spoiler alert as to for how this will eventually end H- hundreds of thousands of pages where what from i guess maybe all the messages back and forth but is that so many pages like even people i text a lot it's not gonna be it's, if you print it all out it's not that much is it i don't know although it's a long and arduous process cc's father timothy hoffman has been there every step of the way he's pledged to attend every single court date right up to the sentencing as a constant reminder of the pain this gang of would-be contract killers inflicted upon his family in an early pre-trial hearing he stood up to tell the court the only thing i know is that my daughter trusted these people my daughter just wanted friends now i have to bury her yeah this poor guy this th- like yeah timothy hoffman i'm sorry this happened to you this is not fair uh wrap up and that's where we're forced to end for the day hopefully soon someday soon we'll be able to follow up on the court proceedings and check in with our plucky gang of teen hitmen in prison where they deserve to be ah uh, forever forever i don't know but they need a, a life sentence like i don't know how long they should be in prison should they die in prison should they die in prison for this yeah maybe yeah maybe i don't know oh, i don't i'm that's good news i'm not a judge uh despite still being basically children this lot were willing to betray the trust and well they were 18 and 21 the main culprits so and however the guy i don't know how old the guy was who, who actually shot her he was an adult as well they're adults they knew what they were getting into their responsibility and they should be tried and punished as adult murderers because that's what they are adult murderers despite being basically children this lot were willing to betray the trust and in the life of a developmentally challenged girl who just wanted to be their friend cc would have continued learning how to navigate the world and perhaps one day found friends that actually deserved her company instead she fell victim to a group of cold calculating schemers who valued their own idiotic shot at wealth above her life it's tough to express how cold and callous that is all it took was the promise of a bit of money and these teens willing to do the bidding of a twisted online pervert i can't even begin to unpack how messed up that is but here's what the u.s attorney in alaska told the press as the pre-trial hearings got underway for all the good the internet can do it can be a very dark place parents would be wise to monitor the activity of their children online after today I would have to agree probably best that all you parents out there make sure that your little angels haven't been recruited as a personal assassin by some catfishing incel better safe than sorry and for any young ones listening in i'm begging you if an online creep ever asks you to commit a crime for money please do the right thing demand to see half the cash up front with the rest after the job gallum you savage don't be these like, like these idiots it's a base it's just basic business sense uh yeah but also on a serious note tell the f-ing police oh sorry tell an adult who will tell the police anything dodgy going online tell an adult don't worry about it just tell them they will understand like as a parent like whatever has happened whatever has gone down i would be i would like they will understand you're just a kid if tell tell an adult tell an adult a friend a pen or someone you trust who's yeah not just doesn't have to be your parents it could be a teacher that you trust a counselor um policeman anyone tell an adult Jesus, f-ing internet, right? Appendices. 
Number one. The latest update I can found I can find on this case is from June 2021, when father of the victim Timothy Hoffman had a memorial ride with the Alaskan biker community to raise money for the victim for victims for justice, the nonprofit that has aided and advised him throughout the ordeal. While we await news on the trial itself, it's at least nice to know that the community up in Anchorage isn't going to let CC be forgotten anytime soon. It's not something you imagine bikers doing. Like, I guess, you know, there's all different sorts of bikers. I imagine they're like rough beer drinking dudes. But uh, that's awesome. I love it. Number two, last of all, a word of warning to be careful out there. Apparently, the tech savvy psychopaths of Gen Z just can't get enough uh, of committing violence for online consumption. Just this September, Vice reported on an epidemic of youth murders in the UK where kids will show off their knives on Snapchat, brag about straight up murdering each other, and even post the final moments of their victims to their story. I will be absolutely livid if this is the last thing I see, if the thing I, last thing I see on earth is some prepubescent dickhead waving an iPhone in my face. That is extremely fucked up. And I assume it's one of those things that actually is, you know, fairly small scale, at least I hope, because uh, otherwise, well, f humanity. This has been an episode of The Casual Criminalist. I'm really sad. It's it's 20 past 11 in the morning. And, and now I have to spend the rest of my day thinking about this. Um, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Now is when I normally ask people to do like buttons and reviews and stuff. But I'm not going to. Uh, I hope you... I'll, I'll see you next time.